Welcome back everybody, my name's Tucker. Let's talk weather. If you haven't noticed, it's been hot outside, but that's about to change in a big way. Only for how long? And severe weather's been in the headlines these past couple of weeks, but storms are about to behave differently with a new pattern coming in. And uh, isn't this hurricane season? We'll talk about what's going on there and why it's so quiet. Welcome back, guys. Good to see you all again, even though I don't actually see you, but you know what I mean. By the way, if you're watching from somewhere where it's not 90 or 100 degrees, let me know where that is. Might be uh, hopping on a flight going that direction later this week. Just kidding. I love the heat, but you don't need to escape it wherever you are because it's leaving us soon. I want to show you a few features real quick here as we record this on our Tuesday afternoon, taking a look at our satellite radar. Of course, we'll be focusing on the weather for the rest of the week, but uh, you got this area of high pressure here. That's why those storms are rotating clockwise, and that's the core of our hot air mass. At the same time, you got more storms out here in the north central U.S., and as this hot air mass begins to diminish, these storms out here are going to be on the move, and we're going to talk about all the changes that are about to come into play here right now. Going to give you a quick 30 to 45 second overview of the jet stream telling us a lot about what's about to happen in our weather. You can see the main jet out here in Canada right now. That's why the weather's generally been quiet and hot. And there's the core of our hot air mass that we were talking about. In the middle here, though, we have this extra piece of energy, and that's what's been fueling the storms. This guy right here, it is providing a lot of wind energy for severe weather. And as we move this into our Wednesday, you're going to see some of that energy begin to shift farther east. Kind of gets placed out here across the uh, across the Midwest, even into the Northeast. That's where we'll have the potential for some severe weather. And as we continue to move this later into the week, the jet really just kind of leaves us, which isn't a bad thing. And this means that our weather may be a little bit quieter. And you can also see we have the ridge beginning to build a bit farther west. That means the hot air is going to shift western of the uh, current you know, hot air. And once we get into next week, that's where things get a little more interesting to me. Uh, you won't see any huge changes, but you begin to see some of this getting into play here. That may fuel our next chance for storms. In the meantime, you also got some uh, waviness out here. You see how those those lines kind of make those wave shapes. Tells us our temperatures are changing but unsettled. So let's talk about what that means for us and uh, how hot it's actually gonna be. By the way, guys, I'm a meteorologist and we do these updates every other day. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to do so and drop any questions you have in the comments. I'll get back to all of you. So what we're looking at now is the air mass and you can see uh, it's pretty, pretty orange. Of course, favoring hotter than average temperatures when you have a look like that. But as we move into the middle and later days of this week, it becomes a little more blue. You know what that means? Probably, yeah, it gets, it gets colder, obviously. Uh, and this is really going to be a big shock to the system because it's a pretty expansive colder air mass. And you're looking at Thursday, moving into Friday here. It, it takes over in a hurry. And as we head into this upcoming weekend, we go from a very, very hot, generally speaking, United States to a reasonably cool Labor Day-like feel for almost the entire country. One exception is going to be out in the uh, Rocky Mountains region. It is going to get warmer out there, but as a whole, it's not going to be as bad as what we're seeing right now. So this is going to stick around in the start of next week, this cooler air. But once we get to the middle of next week, you're going to see a quick flip once again. We're looking a ways out now, but you're looking at uh, Wednesday, Thursday next week, and you bring back all that heat. So... It's a temporary cool down, but I'm letting you know right now, just so you don't get too used to it, the heat is going to come back. It's just going to be towards the middle and later days of next week. That said, there's still going to be a lot of flip-flopping in August, and I expect it's going to be a more volatile month, and it's also going to bring some storms with it, too. going to bring you over to high temperatures now, and um, by the way, I got to 99 here in Boston today. The hottest I've ever experienced is 102. Uh, I'm curious what everyone else has experienced, because I feel like 102 is kind of soft, but... Um, it was hot out here today. I liked it, but it was toasty. Uh, as we head into tomorrow, you can see temperatures across the U.S. basically going to be back in the 90s and even low hundreds once again, unless you're to the north of that black line I just drew. That's your cooler air coming in out of the north, and as we move this a little bit farther ahead, you're going to begin to see it on Thursday collapse uh, as that hot air gets washed out by this newer air mass. Still going to be very hot, and you can see the sharp cutoff here. There's your cold front more or less. You know, Rocky Mountains, kind of your one exception. The western U.S. going to stay warm. But as we move day after day, this is Friday now, you can see that that cooler air continues to take more and more real estate. And we're looking at uh, 70s and 80s for high temperatures across a lot of the northern tier of the U.S. Uh, by Friday. And by Saturday, we're looking at it across a more expansive region. Even areas like in the Carolinas where it's been in the hundreds recently, we're going to be seeing highs back in the 70s and 80s. 
Again, it does stay hot in the western U.S., especially your southwest. Temps in the 110s out there. The Valley in California is still in the 100s, so not everyone cools off. But uh, for a lot of the areas that have been hot, like I said, this will be a much-needed change. You're looking at Sunday highs. The heat really contained out of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, parts of uh, California and Nevada, kind of the normal usual suspects. And then Monday and Tuesday next week, that's where the heat begins to come back. I'm moving this into Wednesday and Thursday, just giving you an early preview. Uh, this is what the U.S. looks like towards next week. A lot more like what we saw with uh, widespread 90s and even some hundreds beginning to show up uh, really anywhere south of the um, black line I just drew there. So the southern half of the U.S. and more heating up with that resurgence next week. Shifting gears now, we're gonna talk about storms, and this is a big part of the forecast because it's shifting a lot as we head into the weekend. We'll get to hurricanes here too, uh, so hang tight for that. But I wanna show you what's going on right now because we still have a severe weather threat as we move into uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday, and you're seeing basically the same areas seeing the activity in the north central US. These are damaging wind threats. Um, you saw the wind energy I showed you on our jet stream pattern, and it's that time of year we get these complex is called ridge riders that uh, basically ride on top of that warm air and just create severe weather, <laughs> simply put. You're seeing here on Wednesday, this complex of storms likely continues. This is going to impact much of the Midwest as it just brings the damaging wind threat east. And there is a chance for some stronger storms to just pop up in New England. I'm not seeing much out there, but um, there's the possibility. I can't completely rule it out here. Moving this further into Thursday, what you're seeing now is a big shift in the overall pattern already. You got this high pressure system showing up in the north central U.S. That's bringing the cooler air in. Now you have the storms you can see pretty clearly south of the uh, high pressure system's influence, more or less. So that's going to create a lot of storms that pop up in the Rockies each afternoon. The mountains working as high level heat sources. Um, a low chance for some severe storms, but more or less just general thunderstorms in the southeast showing up Thursday. Then we got the system out here, which is going to ride along the East Coast, making its way through the Northeast, and it could bring a lot of rain, even a flooding risk to portions of the Northeastern U.S. So think about that Thursday into Friday. But really what we're beginning to see here as we head into the weekend is the severe weather threat starts to decrease, and you're still seeing those daily storms. Doesn't mean storms are over with, but as this high pressure system continues to claim more real estate, it pushes that unstable air farther and farther out of its realm keeping just those general storms to the southeastern U.S., to the Rocky Mountains, and that's about it. And it's really going to prevent any big storms from getting into the U.S., at least through the weekend. So honestly, this weekend looking pretty darn nice. If you're trying to get outside, make some plans. Uh, next week, like I said, I do expect activity to pick up, and you can kind of see that here starting by Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we're looking a ways out now, so I wouldn't take this verbatim, but um, my point is that it's not going to stay like this forever, so take advantage of it while it's here. Now, as far as severe weather goes, here's a level two risk. This is actually for tonight. We talked about those storms that are currently in the north central U.S., bringing that damaging wind threat moving east, and this just rides a lot right along into tomorrow. Uh, this threat for the same storms will be mainly for damaging wind. It could be upgraded to level two in some spots, I believe probably out here in Indiana and Ohio, um, but it's not going to be too big. It's damaging wind and nothing more than that. In the northeast, some pop-up storms could bring some wind or hail. And same thing in the Rockies, a chance for some wind or hail here on Wednesday. On Thursday, take a look at this. No severe weather threat outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. I'll show you some of our AI data, too. And I will say on Thursday and Friday, there's enough that I could see in the Carolinas or somewhere in the vicinity uh, level one risk for perhaps some damaging wind, but really nothing significant. Um, and we'll see, again, this quiet weather on uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, generally speaking, could there be a severe weather threat any of those days? Yes, but it would be a low one and likely for damaging wind or hail. Tuesday is the day that gets a little more interesting, in my opinion. I don't see any big severe weather threat, but I do see, like I said, towards the middle of next week, the activity beginning to tick up again as the weather gets a little more volatile. Now, as promised, we'll take a quick look at hurricane season, which, yes, is ongoing right now, but it's so quiet. So, what gives? Well, I want to remind you that it is early in a season that goes all the way through November. So though it's quiet right now, there is still a lot to go. Now, I wanted to show you some uh, historical context so you might understand what's going on a little better. And we're looking at last year's hurricane tracks to this point. Remember, we had Hurricane Barrel, which I believe was the earliest ever Category 5. That was last June. 
Um, so comparably speaking, obviously, that was an anomaly. It made landfall in Texas as a Category 1. We had two tropical storms out here in the Gulf that both made landfall in Mexico, too. So last year, we were off to a pretty hot start, which might make it seem like we're quiet this year, even though this is pretty normal. And also, for more context, uh, the last five years combined, this is a look at where all of our storms were. And we know the last five years were very active, especially early on from a tropical standpoint. Look at how many of these made landfall, too. You can see along the East Coast, any of those lines that, of course, intersect the land came ashore. And this was all to date. So in the last five years, yeah, it's been active early in the season, which, again, makes it seem like it's been really quiet this year. But all things considered, there's a lot of years we don't get any activity until you know late August. So I just want to let you know, this is not unusual. But I figured you'd at least want to see what some of the data is showing as we move ahead. And I'm going to zoom this forward. What you're looking at is um, an ensemble. So it gives us a general consensus on what all our weather models are saying about activity in the tropics. Wherever you're seeing brighter colors, like these orange spots out here, that doesn't mean that there will be hurricanes. It's not even forecasting a hurricane necessarily. It's just saying as we move into the middle of August, and until then it's quiet, but once we reach the middle of August, it's hinting at more activity, especially towards the Gulf or the you know East Coast out there. So it's something to watch. I want to warn you, by the way, there is an immense amount of misinformation and hype around hurricane season. There are scare tactics to get you to click on things. I'm going to keep it real with you here. This is information you can trust. I just want to let you know there's a lot of fake stuff out there. So at this point, I'm sure there's people on the internet telling you there's going to be a hurricane in mid-August. There could be. But right now, there is nothing to suggest there will be. The only thing we're seeing is that our weather models are hinting at an uptick in activity. We need to watch and wait and see because right now there is nothing to uh, really go off that's concrete, but I want to let you know it's something I'm looking at too. And with that, we're going to wrap up this video. So uh, be sure to ask any of your questions in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Of course, I'll have another update out um, in two days. We do this every other day, and if the weather gets busy, I'll do it more than that. Might do a little educational video tomorrow, actually, if I got time. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, happy to have you here. Hope you enjoyed and got something out of the video. And uh, we're almost done with the heat. So if you don't like it, just uh, look forward to this upcoming weekend. Hope you guys have a safe and uh, nice rest of your week. And I'll see you back here next time.